Hey guys, it's me, your friend John. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a World War I trench club. Well, another one because the first one I made was a little bit complicated if you remember. So I'm going to be teaching you how to make a nice simple one and not one where you have to drill 80 holes and hammer in 80 nails or rivets is what they were called. So there's three main things you need. Number one, a thick pole. This pole is about one inch thick. Uh, I usually like using one inch thick poles for most of my work because they're stronger and they're thicker. Next thing, uh, I believe this is a really thick pipe. I got this at a garage sale the way I got it, but a steel pipe or a metal pipe that will fit on top of this. Almost, that will almost fit on top of this. Uh, you can very easily sand this top part down so it does fit, no problem. Next thing you're gonna need, between one to three thick square cut roofer nails. I think they're called square cut roofer nails, I'm not 100% sure. Now if you were to cut it, the option would be yours on where you'd want to cut it. I would say somewhere between 16 inches to 24, 25 inches. The option is yours on how long you want the weapon to be, if you want a shorter weapon or a little bit of a longer weapon. So you're gonna to wanna to take a pencil and mark where you wanna cut it. Uh, for me, I'm gonna do 24 inches because a lot of trench clubs that I saw online were between 20 to 24 inches and I'm gonna go for the slightly longer one. I can always make it smaller if necessary. So I'm gonna start cutting it. Timber! There we go. A nice cut. So here we go, 24 inches, and this is a pretty good length. I kind of do like it. If you're going to make a weapon similar to this, I recommend somewhere between 20 to 24 inches is my strong recommendation. It's a pretty good length, but I'm going to cut to the chase, and uh, I'm just going to say this. Make sure you file this down, it's a little rough, and you can do this by belt sander or a hand file. I'm gonna use a hand file because it's not that bad. I did a pretty good job cutting it. All right, so this is what it would kind of look like if it was on, and I'm kind of in a debate if the handle is too long because most trend club, like I said, were between 20 to 24 inches, but most of them were around 20 in some cases even less some were even 16 inches So now I'm just thinking is this trench club too long? So I have to figure this one out So after I was playing around with it I realized this thing is really top-heavy because the pipe is so sick and it might be better to leave it longer for two hands This is really a two-handed weapon swing it with one hand is kind of difficult Swing it with two hands is much easier, so if you are going to get a thick pipe like this, I recommend 24 inches for two hands. And if you get a skinnier pipe, something much skinnier than this, which is something I'm kind of recommending because this is heavy, uh, then you can just make it shorter, 20 inches or 16 inches, or between 20 to 16 inches. Um, but yeah, this is still a pretty good weapon. That almost landed on my foot. I'm glad that when it did fall, it didn't land on my foot because as you can see, today's just one of those weird days. I didn't feel like wearing shoes or socks. If it were to land on my foot without shoes on, it would have hurt a little bit more or maybe a lot more. So like I mentioned earlier, this thick piece of wood doesn't want to fit in this hole, a problem I always have, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this top part right here more down and make it a little more skinnier so it does fit into this hole. So now I'm going to go and take a belt sander. I don't recommend doing this by hand file. It's going to take forever, but I'm going to use a belt sander and I'm going to sand it down. So as you can see, it's a lot smaller now and it just almost fits in here. Ugh, not just yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a hand file and just Smoothen it a little more and just make it a little more round uh, with more precision with the hand file. Also, if you have sharp edges on your metal, as you can see, I sanded it down. There were some very sharp edges here. I just took a hand file and I just 
smoothing those hard edges out on this one side. This side was fine. This side did have some hard edges that had to be uh, sanded down. So just take your hand file and just start filing. And don't stay in one spot too long. Go all the way around. All right, we got it all sanded down and it's not 100%, but that's okay. I'll take a hammer and I'll uh, hammer it in. You don't want this to be too small and you also want to make sure that when you sand it, as you can see, it lines up nicely. So you don't want to go too far down or you don't want to leave too much space. You want it to be as close as exact as possible to all of this, as you can see right here. All right, here comes the fun part. You see all these little lines? All those lines, I'm gonna hand carve with this hand file and uh, it's gonna make a nice grip out of it and you're probably wondering why I just don't use leather wrap or cord wrap. Well, because during World War I, a, a lot of trench clubs would have hand carved uh, groove in the gripping they did have leather and they did have cord but I want to be uh, more traditional with this piece but um, you can use cord and you can use leather if you want to only if you're a lunatic like me would you hand file all this but don't you worry I'm gonna handle it nicely so you just start filing away Make sure your marks are all the same number. Make sure they're all evenly spread out. I'm gonna be here forever. All right, one done. Uh, 10 more to go. Please shoot me. Oh my god, this is a lot of work. Uh, do you know the original blueprints for this thing that I made? Uh, it was supposed to have a leather grip, but I decided, nah, I'll think I'll just file it today. What was I thinking? I should have just used leather grip. It's almost like I'm playing a violin. A very sad violin song. See? Like playing the violin. So, as you can see in the original blueprints, or white prints, this grip was supposed to be leather. I guess you gotta hand it to me. I think I did a pretty good job. So once you're done getting the handle done, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna drill a hole right in the center, and you're gonna want a wood car wheel. That's what this is. You don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna do it because I'm gonna put this here, you know, kind of act as like an extra uh, handle for me. So you're going to want a peg. And you're going to want to pour some glue into that hole. There we go. And just get it all around and in that hole. And then you're going to want to take your peg and put it in that hole. Not all the way. And then you're going to want to take your wheel. I'm going to use this side. This side's a little bit nicer. This side kind of looks, well, like a wheel. So I'm going to tuck that side in. Put a little glue on it. Put some glue in there. There we go. And some glue on here. Take your car wheel and put it right on. And give it a good spin. Next step, get a hammer and just hammer the peg right in. There we go. And just clean it up. Get a wet rag and just clean that glue drips off. There we go, nice and clean. Now just let the glue dry and uh, then we're gonna clear it once the glue's done drying. Once your glue is set drying up here, what you're gonna wanna do next is you're gonna wanna clean all your pencil marks and dirt. Just gently wet sand the whole thing down and you know, you don't wanna block in or clear in the 
pencil mark or the dirt or anything like that. So make sure it's nice and clean and dry before you add the uh, stain or clear coat. Make sure you get in these little groove handles. Now when you add your clear, it's important to make sure you do it nice and even and also make sure you secure in either a vise or a clamp or something to anchor it down so it doesn't move around. Um, you can add one or two or three layers of clear coat. It depends on how thick the uh, clearing is. Uh, you can also stain the wood before you uh, clear it. It's it's up to you. I'm going to leave it this color because a lot of trench clubs were a light brown or they just didn't have any coloring to them. So this is how I'm doing it. But I think I made myself pretty clear on how I feel about this club and how I want to keep it traditional. Alright, once your clear coat is 100% dry, as you can see, it's nice and shiny. Some people don't like the shiny look. I got complaints in the past saying, it's too shiny, it needs to be more dull. Well. That's okay. I'm going to use a gray scuff pad to uh, take away the shine from this handle. Alright, there we go. Once you're done scuffing it, take a uh, damp rag and just clean off all that dust. Then you dry it off. I also drilled a hole here so I can put a type of rope or cording in here for a handle. Alright, it's nice and dry. As you can see, it's a lot more dull and uh, does look a lot nicer. Not so shiny. It makes it look more vintage. Now we're going to add this giant heavy uh, weight to the top of it. You take your weight and you put it right on. Take a hammer or rubber mallet and you just start hammering. It's almost in, but I'm going to use a metal hammer. Maybe that will help more. <sighs> ah! Ah, so I got it in. I got some of these little ends. So you just take a knife and just scrape them off. So once you got it in, I'm going to add a nail in it to stop it from coming out or wiggling out. Kind of like what they do in hammers, how they put a nail in there so the head doesn't come out. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add two more nails just to make sure it doesn't come out. Last thing I want is this head coming out when I'm swinging it like a maniac and this thing hits me on my head. I don't want that. You might want that, but I don't. So those three nails in there will widen the wood a little bit more, so this is tight. Alright, so the weapon's nice and done. Got the nails in, got my handle on. All that's left is to give it a good strength test on Junkman Woody, or at least what's left of him, if you remember what happened to all the times I killed Junkman Woody. We're gonna kill him more. 
safety goggles. Let's kill him. I hope this top doesn't fly off and hit me on my head. I know that would make a really good video, but I don't want that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shit, man. I only whacked him a couple of times. Damn. Payback's not over yet, Junkman Woody. I'm gonna finish you. Oh boy, this definitely will kill. Oh man, yeah. R.I.P. Junk Man Woody. I'll rebuild him, maybe. This is a pretty solid weapon. I definitely wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of this. Uh, if you can see, it killed Junk Man Woody even more. He's really dead. Um, also, if you're gonna make a weapon like this, let me know. I wanna see your version of your weapon. Maybe you did a better job, maybe you didn't, but this is pretty good. And you're probably thinking, this weapon has a really big head on it. Well, uh, I looked up a lot of trench art. I looked up a, I looked up a lot of trench clubs, and realistically, some of them did have big fat heads like this, as you can see in the images. So, trench clubs had different designs, and this is a design that a lot of soldiers did have. And uh, I can see why. So that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure you like the video. You subscribe to my YouTube channel. You follow me on Instagram and Reddit. And also join my community. I'm going to leave all the information at the end of the video. Clean yourself up. You're a mess. Here, let me give you a hand.